What's up, everybody? Ninth Jim back with another VGC 2020 Pokemon Sword and Shield competitive video. Today, we're talking about Hitmontop, the fighting type top boy, spinning top boy. And this Pokemon's pretty interesting. It's all a good bit of play at the very beginning of Sword and Shield format and has kind of fallen off and has not really been used very frequently recently. Uh, maybe a couple of top cut places here and there, but nothing really huge. And I still think this Pokemon's really good, has access to a lot of good tools, uh, things like Wide Guard, Sucker Punch, Mock Punch, Bullet Punch, Faint, Helping Hand, Fake Out, Close Combat, a lot of really good moves across the board. It has really solid stats across the board as well, pretty solid typing, being fighting, not too bad, not too good, and yeah, an amazing ability, it has Intimidate. So this Pokemon is actually really, really well-rounded. Oh, it's supposed to be a pun? It goes round and round in a spin. I don't know. But this Pokemon is pretty sweet in general. I like it a lot. I think it's good. So without further ado, let's start into the actual video. So resistances to Bug Rock Dark, as it is just a mono fighting type Pokemon, is pretty solid. Weaknesses to Flying, Psychic, and Fairy. These are kind of bad. Fairy and Flying really prevalent in the game. Psychic a little bit. You'll run into Psychic stuff every now and again. Mostly the worst thing is Flying. You know, you have Max Airstreams coming in from so many big Pokemon. Togekiss being the biggest one off offhand, it is the most used Pokemon still. Even with Incineroar, it is still topping the, the usage chart at the max. So yeah. Also has Dazzling Gleam. You don't you don't want to see a Togekiss with this Pokemon. Not at all. Not at all. Um, into our stats, so we have H HP at 50, which isn't great, but defense at 95 and special defense at 110. Those are both very solid, so maxing your investment into HP a little bit more into your defenses in this Pokemon can be fairly bulky, which is really good. Avoiding a lot of key Okos and still uh, being able to eject button, get out of there with Intimidate. So it's setting off Intimidate once and then bringing it back in, Intimidate Fake Out again is really, really good. Or even Helping Hand or Bullet Punch or even a Close Combat, you never know. So HP or Bulk, pretty good. Pretty good bulk in general. Attack 95, special attack 35, which is pretty good. You know, not taking much away from your other stats, only being 35 in special attack. Attack at 95 is pretty solid as well. And then speed at 70 is a pretty solid mid-speed tier. We're on the same speed tier as things like Butterfree and uh, Bisharp, but all of those you'll see at max speed 99% of the time. So usually we're alone on our speed tier, which is pretty cool. You know, we don't have to worry about outspeeding guys on our own speed tier, which is cool. No speed ties, maybe a couple, you know, with weird calcs, but probably not ever really, because we're at 91. This is a really normal speed where pretty good, pretty good off pretty well off you know probably have to speed tie with other hitmon tops but that's probably it anyway three minutes into the video let's get into the actual video the meat and potatoes is the build so ability intimidate this is amazing i mean it lowers both of your opponent's pokemon by one their attack stage by one which is very good i mean i don't have to sit here and talk about how intimidate is good all day because intimidate is good all day every day it's so good you got things like defiant and competitive to get in the way but that's really it it you know, Milotic and Passimian on the rise, you know, even Braviary on the rise, um, mostly due to Intimidate from Incineroar. However, this is kind of hitting the crossfire. We saw uh, the ability Intimidate, uh, but it's good. It's really good. Don't get me wrong. It's really good. You come in, Intimidate, and then you eject button, switch out. You hit, hit a fake out or, or a helping hand first, and then you get two really good things out of this Pokemon and then it switches out and then you get two really good things out of this Pokemon again. So this Pokemon is usually guaranteed four good things, but if they Oko it then, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, for our item, we have Eject Button. This allows us to get more good things off with this Pokemon. Hitting a Fake Out and Intimidate and then Eject Button switching out and then being able to hit Intimidate and Fake Out again later in the game is a really, really good thing, especially with so many powerful physical attacking mons in the, me in the meta. You know, you have things like Excadrill, Tyranitar, Conkledor, Incineroar. You know, you have a million good Pokemon that are all physical, that are really, really solid in the game right now. And Intimidate hits a lot of things. Eject Button hit lets you hit Intimidate multiple times very very solid some other options if you don't want to use eject button is things like the aguave berry figgy berry the pinch berries essentially and then citrus berry so you can really use a bunch of different berries you can even use rosalie berry to minimize on that fairy oko same with the flying berry i forget what the flying berry is called but uh super effective having damage is pretty solid in general 
Um, into the move set, so into our actual move set that we're using is fake out, helping hand, close combat, and bullet punch. You can <clears throat> definitely switch out bullet punch for mock punch, whichever one you need. The main synergy here that with bullet punch is Togekiss being able to proc your own uh, weakness policy and then deal out a huge amount of damage with Max Air String Turn 1 or even Starfall or whatever you want to do with that Pokemon. Even uh, if you use Heat Wave or Flamethrower, you can shoot out a really big Max Flare, take out huge things like Dynamaxed Excadrills, Pokemon like that, and that's really, really good. If you're using the weakness policy Lapras and you want to self proc that then you'll have to switch Mach punch, Mach punch in for bullet punch but you know so uh, also Mach punch is just a better move in general than bullet punch if you're not going for that Togekiss synergy just because it's stab you'll be doing a little bit more damage um, which is really good against things like Tyranitar you know Tyranitar being the big one doing Mach punch hits like 50 60 percent on an Undynamax that's massive that's just massive um, fake out and helping hand are our priority moves so we can intimidate guarantee an attack and then get hit by eject button switch out Fake out is a really good option and then helping hand is a very good option as, as well And close combat is just our highest damage physical stab move that is good I think we get a superpower too But I like the trade-off of close combat more than superpower lowering our defenses instead of our attack too, which kind of sucks when that happens, but yeah, this Pokemon's really bulky, and even after a close combat, you can live a lot of attacks, which is really cool, especially, like, neutral damage attacks. Anyway, into our flex moves, we have Mach Punch, like I was saying, you can really switch that out with Bullet Punch, whichever one you want. We have Sucker Punch, which is really good, hitting first, uh, unless the Pokemon uses any non-attacking move, then fails, um, which is unfortunate, but Sucker Punch is good, you know, 70 power, dark move, it's not bad at all. We also have Wide Guard, which just is protect for multi-targeting move, you know, this is really good against things like Tyranitar Excadrill with multiple rock slides slash earthquakes coming out, that's a really, really good move there, um, things like, I think it hits Dragon Darts. Probably. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, definitely should hit uh, Dragon Darts. But, yeah, Wide Guard is a good, it's a really good move, and it can really cover yourself with uh, things like, you know, if you're using Toge Togekiss or Lapras, you know, you can run that um, self-proc weakness policy attack and then Wide Guard following turns for, for uh, um, Rock Slides. That can be really powerful. So, Wide Guard is a good option. And then we also have Faint, which just breaks through Protect and has priority. So, that's a really good move in general. I just like it a lot. It's very low damaging. But if you, you know, if they're like sashed and then they protect that following turn, hoping their um, partner Pokemon can deal with a threat, you know, you just have fate and you just kill it. And that's really, really good. So into our investment. So this is just the most used spread on Picolytics. I haven't used this Pokemon yet this gen, um, but throughout our damage calcs, you know, we, we've seen a lot of, um, reasoning why this is a good spread. It's the most used on Picolytics by far, I think like over double of the next spread under it. So I think it's like semi-reliable. Anyway, for the actual investments itself, 252 into HP, max investing, just being as bulky as possible with HP, and then we put 4 into attack and 4 in speed, just so that we can utilize all of our um, EVs, and then 148 into defense, and 100 into special defense with plus, giving us careful nature for plus def special defense and minus special attack, just getting as bulky as possible, specially and defensively. This kind of just makes sure we don't die from a lot of uh, common spreads on common Pokemon, which is good. There are still definitely things that Oko us, you know, things like Max Airstream from uh, Togekiss, Max Invested can definitely Oko us, and a couple of other things definitely can Oko us. But if you get Intimidate and like a Fake Out slash Helping Hand, um, a lot of the time that can put you in enough of a good position with Hitmontop to not even have to. Also, uh, be careful for our synergies with uh, Togekiss and Lapras. If you go for the self-proc weakness policy, make sure your opponents not follow me. Look, just make sure that, you know, they, they have a Togekiss out. Don't go for that attack because then you'll hit your their Togekiss and be like, okay, that sucked. That turn sucked. Could have gotten a fake out, um, uh, fake out, big attack off, you know, could have done better. So that's just something to be careful of. Anyway, into our synergies, the Togekiss and Lapras synergy I already explained. With self proc weakness policy and wide guard, really, really good stuff. It's very synergetic. Fake out is really good for this as well, being able to hit something, get a max air stream. Now you're faster than whatever you faked out, which is good. Um, helping hand can be huge on these Pokemon, even without self procking your weakness policy. You helping hand, you take a big knockout. They probably will proc your weakness policy a lot of the time. Lapras only runs weakness policy half the time. I think it's even less than half the time with weakness policy on Togekiss now, as that's changed. 
Um, so yeah, and then Excadrill is our last synergy. This just covers a lot of our the bases. You know, we have weakness to flying and fairy and psychic. Excadrill kind of just covers all those bases. Has Iron Head for the fairy and Rock Rock Slide for the flying or huge powerful max moves just to kind of set that in motion. Anyway, that's going to be it for this slide. We're going to go ahead and jump into our speed tiers. We are not insanely fast. Here we are at 90. Hitmontop uninvested, 90. We're actually at 91 because of the 4 investment into speed. So we're at 91. So we'll be outspeeding uh, opposing Hitmontops probably half the time. Maybe less than half the time. Maybe even way more than half the time. I have no idea. But this is the most used spread on Picolytic. So this will probably cover it a lot of the time 91 for him on top which is good things that we always outspeed out creamy not always outspeed but usually out creamy will usually be uninvested in the speed so we'll be outspeeding it tyranitar a lot of the time is uninvested in speed as well we'll be outspeeding that probably at least half the time probably around half the time jellicent lapras sylveon usually are uninvested as well we'll be outspeeding those 75 to more percent of the time which is pretty good if they set up uh tailwind obviously it'll be outspeeding us any of those pokemon but we're usually outspeeding them, which is really good. Things that do outspeed us, Togekiss Uninvested will always be outspeeding us. Milotic always be outspeeding us. DDF always be un uh, outspeeding us. All of these Pokemon are un uninvested. Form Change Rotom will be faster than this 99% of the time. But it'll, that just goes to show it'll always be outspeeding us. Um, being at 90, we're at a, in a weird speed tier where not a lot of things are on that same speed tier. Um, or even in the vicinity, a lot of things are faster or a lot of things are slower. We're right in that middle speed where it's kind of just weird um, in general. Anyway, on to our damage calcs. That's it for our speed tiers. So, damage calcs, here we are. A lot of these are just like, haha, we live, haha, we die. Oh well. Um, so, Togekiss, max airstream into Dynamax. This is max invested 252 special attack. This is without weakness pro policy proc. Um, hits guaranteed Oko, 103 to 122 percent. This is really unfortunate. Means we have a bad matchup with the most prevalent Pokemon in the meta. However, a lot of them will be built defensively and not have 252 special attack Togekiss. So even if they do max Airstream, um, turn one, it, we won't have a guaranteed Oko, which is really good. Uh, so we don't have to worry about a guaranteed Oko a lot of the time. Although it will still be a high percentage Oko chance. So not a great matchup with. Uh, Togekiss, which is unfortunate. Nasty Plot boosted Dynamax Rotom Wash. Max Geyser into us. This is only four special attack Rotom Wash. This is the most common spread on Picolytics as well. Hitting an 80 to 95% chance guaranteed Oko. After a Nasty Plot, this means we get one turn to do something, one turn to not do something. We can hit a fake out on it first and then switch it out um, or get ejected by eject button. And uh, potentially it'll be three turn for it so it'll get fake out the first turn second turn nasty plot third turn uh max geyser three turns we should definitely get our value for this pokemon and then it's not even a guaranteed oko so we have a pretty solid matchup against that however i do think uh it could definitely like spreads could change for rotom wash and uh be a little bit more you know special attack oriented do more damage with nasty plot boosted and then kill us with an oko it's definitely a chance and it'll definitely threaten um an oko so intimidated Dynamax, Weakness Policy, Proc, Tyranitar, Max Darkness, that's a lot of things I know, a lot of multipliers. Intimidate from our him on top, lows, lowers it 1, Weakness Policy raises it 2, and then Max Darkness, it's also Dynamax, so it's Max Darkness. Max Invested, I said that so many times. Anyway, Guaranteed 2 hit KO, hits 48 to 57%. This is guaranteed 2 hit KO with Sandstream. That's why, because if it gets a low roll, it wouldn't be a guaranteed 2 hit KO. But because of Sandstorm damage, it does. Next, we have Milo Milotic Scald. This is minimal invest in investment into special attack, but it's plus 2 because of our Intimidate and their competitive. Um, giving us giving them still only an 8.6% chance to 2 hit KO, only hitting 44 to 53%. This is pretty good. We'll usually be able to take 2 attacks from a Milotic after competitive boost, which is very, very good. Him on top close, close combat into a Tyranitar. This is a dym Dynamaxed Tyranitar, hitting 69 to 82%. So with something like a ty like a Togekiss, so if you lead Togekiss to him on top, you can go Dazzling Gleam in close combat. Most 
Most of the time, both will be out speeding, and then you can just kill off a Tyranitar. That's really huge. Even if a Dynamax is, a lot of the time, you'll be able to knock it out with that combination of two attacks, which is very, very good. And then for our last one, we have Close Combat into Duraludon, having, uh, hitting 40 to 48%, guaranteed three hit KO. This is pretty bad, and uh, not great. Not very reliable. But we have Intimidate, which does nothing to Duraludon. Why did I say that? I don't know. I don't know why I said it. I don't know. I don't know why I said it. Anyway, on to single spotlight. So, single spotlight. This Pokemon is not insanely impressive in, in singles. So, you know, probably not going to be using it. Probably not going to be seeing it in singles very frequently. However, if this was how it is, then we'd be playing it like this. Rapid spin, just to delete those entry hazards, which is very good. Close combat, mock punch. Close combat is our highest attack. Uh, our best physical option for stab and then mock punch is just priority which is very good in general and then we also have sucker punch just to get some uh, key knockouts while they're you know think they're gonna kill us oh we killed you got them you know that's kind of how it goes leftovers as our item just so because we're fairly bulky and we get to just live a little while set up an intimidate switch around rapid spin it's very good unfortunately we lost things like toxic being able to just wear down walls we also lost things like foresight which gives us rapid spin on ghost pokemon which is really good they think they're gonna rapid spin block you and then you're like foresight boom what's up what's up and then you fit then you rapid spin them get rid of their hazards and it's really good and there's no way to spin block the pokemon now there is a way to spin block it because we don't have foresight unfortunately if only you had the foresight to get it to get foresight in uh sword and shield you know what i'm saying anyway that's gonna be it for this video i like him on top i think it's a good option in doubles maybe not as good in singles i think this pokemon's really cool it saw a lot of play kind of trended down and now it's just very very low in the usage charts which is unfortunate but it is what it is. I think this Pokemon could see more play with weakness policy shenanigans and uh, mock punch and bullet punch. Togekiss is just so heavy in the meta that it's really hard to to see um, to, to you know like see expect that follow me and then they're like okay, got him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, hopefully I said all that right. I feel like I said that weirdly. Anyway, that's gonna be it today. For our video, him on top, he's pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, it means so much to me. And comment down below if you want to see any more guys in the future. I still have a list of a couple of guys, but some get prioritized a little bit higher because they're more used in the meta. And uh, I like them more. Seems reasonable to me. Anyway, more videos coming out, so stay tuned. Put on the notifications if you want to. If you don't want to, then I don't blame you. I post a lot, so I'm not going to hate you if you don't. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a good uh, next three weeks and goodbye.